Hey friends, welcome back to Simply A Better You. We are busy in the kitchen today. We are still taking in our summer harvest. So lots of cucumbers, yellow squash, and plenty of zucchini. And we are trying to get through the last bit of cucumbers that we have in our fridge. We have done bread and butter pickles and a sweet pickle, and now we are working on dill relish today. So we are chopping, chopping, chopping. There's lots of chopping involved. <laughs> Also, I have noticed some sniffles in the house here recently, which is a little unexpected for this time of year for our house, but um, Mia has a sore throat and Hannah has got some sniffles and, and, and a little bit of cough, not really a cough, um, but we are trying to nip that in the bud get them hydrated and full of really good nutrient dense food and of course Hannah has suggested chicken noodle soup that is her go-to and her favorite so I've got multiple things going on in the kitchen right now I have got my again. roaster out because we are going to go ahead and make some bone broth and I am currently thawing a tub of uh, bone broth. This was made from um, chicken bones though, so that's going to go into our, um, what am I making again? Chicken noodle soup. <laughs> yes! My favorite! And I also have a chicken thawing <laughs> so that we can again replenish the bones that we will need to make broth as well as make um, chicken noodle soup for the girls. So, many moving parts today. We are trying to get lots of things done. So let me go ahead and go over the process that we're doing to get the dill pickles done. You do want to cut the ends off because you know it's got those little brown bits on the bottom. Uh, totally up to you if you want to remove the skins. It is easier for it to go through the chopper if I take the skins off. If I was doing it by hand, I would probably just leave the skins on like I did for my um, bread and butter relish. But it, it does go through the chopper a lot easier. Hannah's so good for that. I never remember those things. Yes. Because I can remember what the people say in video. It's that, it's that young youth. She has a memory on her. So, for these, I usually cut them in half. Slice them down the center. And this is the perfect size to go in the little chopper. <coughs> and Hannah is in charge of the chopping process. Put it a little bit little. No, that will fit. It's It'll hard for me. Put some muscle in it, girl. Like Hannah, you cannot place your fingers on the blade of the knife. Okay? Okay, that one was too much hard. I like to do this. Watch. Watch. Right. You can hold it and you push through it with the knife. Okay? You never put your fingers up here. Remember I told you your fingers can slide off and it'll cut you. Curl your fingers back and you're pushing through it with the knife. Okay? Yep. Curl your fingers back. You want tips? That's to protect your little. There you go. Good job. Okay. So we have probably about 60 to 70 pickles to go here. Um, the best part about this Mommy is that help. you can take. Is it not going? There you go. The best part about this is you can take 
probably one of the great things about um, pickles is that you can take your time doing this. I am going to salt these pickles. Pickles. I'm going to salt these pickles and stick them in the fridge. To make what? For two hours, three hours, four hours. Um, you can leave them in there for 24 hours. To make so, what? depending on my time and how many of these we get chopped up. I will decide how long these are going to sit in the fridge. I may not water bath until tomorrow. So, have you ever made your own pickle relish before? Or have you made any relish? Um, do you have a favorite recipe? Do you have a family recipe that you love? If you want, feel free to share that in the comments below everybody loves recipes and I love to see and try out new recipes and that's usually how I end up creating my own is that you'll look at several recipes and pull ideas from each of those until you create and find your own <coughs> so after getting so after getting my blood work back, um, I think we're we are most definitely going back to a um, no sugar, gluten free lifestyle. I think that is going to be absolutely permanent for me. I don't think I'm going to be able to cheat here and there. My um, Thyroid antibodies have tripled. I mean, I'm sitting at 1600 right now. Um, I was down in the 300s, and they're supposed to be at less than 30. Oops. So, I am in the middle of a um, flare up. I knew that I already was with the move and everything, and come on moving is stressful and you don't eat the best because you're moving and we didn't just move down the road we moved from Florida yes. so multiple states away um, moved into a home with no appliances so we had to order appliances and have them delivered and it made things a little difficult not to say that we hit fast food because I am absolutely hey, not I am absolutely not a fast food person but you can only eat so much store-bought and restaurant-bought salads and chicken and stuff because you don't actually know where they are sourcing their fruits, vegetables, and, and meats. Um, we did move, and we chose to move to a small town. They do not have all the big, fancy smoothie places and the vegetarian restaurants and the green restaurants and they don't have that here and you know what i can say though is that they have tons of farmers here and i am able to source produce that i cannot grow myself and i can source meat that i can't grow myself from local farmers up and down my street which is great <coughs> you okay but, you know, as far as traveling and things like that, that's usually where my system gets pretty messed up. Um, developing a new sleep habit has been hard with all the moving and the late nights and stuff. It, it's definitely wore on my body. And I need to get back to what I consider my normalcy and start taking better care of myself. So Joe started his new job today. That is definitely a big stress reliever because when he's stressed, I'm stressed. And even though I knew the job was coming, because honestly, I really live in a place of faith. I know that God provides and he has always provided for me. He has never let me down, never left me without. 
and I was just simply waiting for what was coming. Um, and <laughs> Joe's like, how can you be that patient? Practice. <laughs> Lots of practice. Though I have my moments though, when we were closing on this house and even looking for it, my patience was gone, long gone. But you're falling behind. Because you I need a break? No, I need them cut up a little bit. Like in little pieces. In little pieces? Do you want to take a strawberry break? Okay. I'm not we'll be right back. We're going to take a snack break. Yay! Okay, so we have a few things going on here. Hannah is making herself a little cucumber salad. And now I'm making that. Oh, now she's adding it to our, our pile of dill relish. So she's chopping up those last few... I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like Last few pickles. Um, I went ahead and chopped up, sliced up, pickle slices, to make a cucumber salad. And, I mean, I've got one bag left. Of pickles here, of cucumbers. Um, oh yeah, don't hit your face with a knife in your hand. Getting a little crazy. I made some um, some pickles, Sorry. fermented pickles. I have never fermented pickles before, so I found a recipe online, and I'm only doing a quart size jar. Uh, definitely before you jump into the gallon crocs and I'm gonna make all of this sauerkraut and fermented such um, try it out to see if you like it first start small I found a recipe for um, the salt to water brine ratio for the fermented pickles so I went ahead and threw in some cucumber slices some um, sweet banana peppers and I've got some mustard seed in there and some peppercorn and of course garlic. I like fermented garlic. Oh, I love fermented garlic and pickled garlic and whole garlic and just powdered garlic and just anything garlic. So um, that is going to sit on my counter up here for probably about seven days and I'll check it to see what I think about it and decide if I'm gonna let it go longer or not. Hannah and I like sour things. Mm -hmm. I eat um, Sour Patch Kids. She eats Sour Patch Kids. Okay. Um, Hannah likes sauerkraut, and mm -hmm. she loves when I get um, fermented pickles from the store. Yes. But I've never made them, but I have bought them, and she really loves those pickles. And occasionally I will catch her drinking the brine. <laughs> so... Anywho, we are finishing up with chopping and cutting and slicing and dicing. And really, I never want to see another cucumber for as long as I live. But we are almost done. Mom, I need help. And then I have to Eight. work my way through. You've got this one left. And these two left. Uh, I've got to work my way through the um, the yellow squash, whatever. Um, so I'm trying to use up everything, and then I have to head into yellow squash. We have shredded, bagged, and froze, chunked, cooked, casseroled sauteed so much squash um, it's crazy just crazy I have looked up probably every recipe you could think of for yellow squash we made yellow squash bread you can make brownies out of it um, you can grill it fry it saute it barbecue it I you can basically do anything that you would do with zucchini to yellow squash. So, 
lots and lots of processing. Um, I will say that even though this is hard work and it is time consuming, once you get a rhythm going, this is very therapeutic. <laughs> and you get snacks. Oh, that one's good. These cucumbers are wonderful. Way better you. than the cucumbers I get at the store. Um, these are juicy and they almost have like a hint of sweetness and almost like a lime, not a lime, a um, lemon zing to them. I really, really like these. I don't care for these. Jill got Boston pickling and I didn't care for those. Mm. So buy rib. And he picked up a um, a hybrid cucumber. It has really thin skins on it, and I think it's great for like salads. But it is a very flimsy cucumber, and I just that one we won't be getting again. Mommy, they don't will you keep cut very me well in the meat. fridge. Will you cut me up some more cucumbers? Oh no, you got plenty there, baby. We're all we're all done. Okay. Last one. Mm. Okay. I was not in charge of buying the pickles. Pickles. I was not in charge of buying the um, the cucumber plants this year. We did not seed, direct plant, um, direct sow anything except flowers, sunflower seeds. Um, what else? Beans. Mm -hmm. We direct sowed beans. Everything else we bought because we moved to Kentucky the first week of April. Planting season starts here generally uh, in May, Mother's Day weekend. There's just no way. Not, we didn't even have anything unpacked and trying to do seeds and plant a garden and stuff was just crazy in itself. The fact that we moved in and decided we're gonna put in a garden on top of unpacking and putting things away and was crazy. But we really wanted the garden because we couldn't have what we wanted and had envisioned in Florida. So Joe tilled the dirt and this was supposed to be the figure it out season, you know, as far as how our land works, where we have sun, shade, extra moisture, little microclimates, um, how good the dirt was. We were just going to throw it in and figure it out. I guess people call that chaos gardening or something. But um, so we have two gardens, garden A and garden B. Um, Garden A is basically my garden that I'm tending to, which is mostly peppers, okra, tomatoes, cabbage, broccoli, and I've got some snake beans in there, jalapenos. And then Joe did all the cucumbers and melons and squash and stuff in the backyard. He's got a oh, few nice. tomato plants back there, but, um, and some pumpkin plants. He has, he's doing his own thing and I'm doing mine. His garden is bigger than mine. <laughs> he puts, I don't want to say little effort, like I'm out here babying these plants and nurturing them along and he's like, yeah, throw them in the ground, it'll grow. And it grows. His plants are huge. Um, where I'm outside, you know, spraying mine with neem oil because it's got aphids and <laughs> But, okay, I'm totally getting off track. Yes. Mm. Give me. That was good. So, I'm going to make a cucumber salad. I do have some tomatoes coming in. Um, I've been picking a few of them kind of early. So, I've got some pretty yellow tomatoes. Since we did buy our plants, some of them were marked 
yellow tomato. So I don't know what kind of yellow tomato these are, but they're yellow. Um, these are supposed to be a, a purple, I believe. Some type of Cherokee purple, I think, tomato. I did pull them off early because we got a ton of rain all of a sudden. And um, I had a feeling that they were going to crack. And sure enough, I was going to let them ripen on the vine because I wanted to see them turn purple. But um, they, uh, yeah, immediately started to crack. So I went ahead and I pulled those. And then we just have, you know, our red almost like a salad tomato They're not very big but so far they've been good um and i will probably put a few of the red ones in the tomato salad and cut up some onions and stuff and we'll be good to go cucumbers you guys can see those little pieces. They work great this size for relish. So now what I am going to do is transfer these into a bowl and I'm going to salt them. You can use whatever salt you would like. You can use the pink Himalayan salt, sea salt, Celtic salt, Redmond salt. Um, you don't want to pop this boy. Okay. Canning salt. But um, I am trying to use up the rest of this sea salt that I have because it is taking up space in my cabinet. And space here is definitely something valuable. So, we'll get these going. I may end up with actually two containers in the fridge. Here comes the Hannah. Okay, don't terrorize your big sister, okay? Be loving. Okay. I know she's not feeling good. I'm back to help. Okay. So, you know, just a little bit of salt. Get them coated. I'm going to let these sit in the fridge until I get back to them. I have 24 hours to let this sit if I want to. And then um, we will get them ready to cook up in a water bath. cucumbers that I had soaking in the fridge overnight. Um, it is up to you if you want to rinse these or not. This dill relish is, is salty. So I've tasted the cucumbers. The salt level in them is fine. To me, they don't taste salty at all. But I have been looking at several dill relish recipes for canning. And they really do vary, but I don't I don't like the combination of it. Some of them have sugar in them and I don't want sugar in my dill relish. I know that helps cut the acidity, but um, I have had to cut out sugar completely and I don't want to add it into extra things that I'm putting into salads and that I'm eating. So, um, I am going to go ahead and change up this recipe that I had printed off and I found another recipe online that doesn't have the sugar in it, but then I realized I don't have dill seed. Um, all of these recipes call for dill seed, and I really don't want to put this off for another day. So, I have dill weed in my garden, and I also have it um, dried in a jar. So, I'm going to use that. And... Um, I have some recipes that call for mustard seed and some don't. Some say put turmeric in it, others don't. So, 
since this is mine, and um, I am going to go ahead and and veer from the recipe. Hmm. I'm basically going to use um, the same ingredients, except I'm going to substitute some things. I'm not putting sugar in it. It's still going to have vinegar and salt and the mustard seed. I want the turmeric in it. And um, I'm adding onion, adding green pepper instead of red pepper. I don't think that really matters. I'm sure it's a pretty thing, but I have green peppers. I don't have red peppers. I'm trying not to have to run to the store. A trip to the store for me is 20 minutes into town and 20 minutes back. So I don't want to do that <laughs> to make relish. I'm going to use what I have. I've got my garlic. I'm going to throw about six or seven cloves of crushed garlic in there. So, um, and I will write this down as I'm doing it. I don't. I don't necessarily want to share the recipe in the comments below until I really know that this is going to work. I may mix all of this up and decide, meh. But I'm still going to take you along the process with me. And you'll learn this as you get into cooking from scratch and making things at home. Um, you, will, you will figure out the things that you want to add that you don't want to add. It's not going to change your recipe a whole lot. None of this is going to affect the way this will can. I'm not changing the vinegar level, the acidity level, the water ratio. Of course, there's no water in here except what's in the cucumber. Um, I'm not doing anything drastic like that. And these will be water bath canned. And I'm also going to try something a little bit different with the water bath canning. I probably will not record that because I don't want you all to come for me. <laughs> People can be really mean, and I am going to experiment with some things. I will do that off camera and let you know how it goes. But um, I am looking at and, and reading and researching Mennonite canning and how the Amish can and stuff, and they, they are using old traditions that obviously haven't failed them and it in my mind the process just makes sense you know I have a lot of questions when it comes to canning and I ask people and I, I watch the you know approved canning methods and I'm like this just doesn't make sense why I mean I understand why they're doing it I get the whole botulism thing and stuff like that but we take precautions so that we don't have that problem. And of course, you always use your sniffer and your eyes. If it doesn't smell right and it doesn't look right, I'm not gonna eat it. That's the same thing as if I go to a restaurant. If it doesn't look right and it doesn't smell right, you're telling me it's fine, I'm not gonna eat it. So I'm going to switch things up a little bit here. If anything, what I love sharing on my channel is that there is no reason to be fearful in doing something new, trying something new, experiencing something new. This is how we learn. This is how we grow as people. This is how, honestly, you learn to live a better life. You don't have to follow everything that the world is telling you to do. That's, we won't get into that. That could lead me down a, um, a different road. So. I am going to veer from the recipe a little bit and we're going to try something new. We'll see how it turns out, you know, if it totally bombs. I'm going to be super sad that I, f I feel like I wasted all these cucumbers. But you know what? These are the cucumbers for this recipe I'm going to try. I have another 14 cups of chopped cucumbers. So if this one doesn't come out right, we'll try another one. <laughs> Either way, we're gonna end up with dill pickle relish. So here we go. My liquids are up here on the stove. This is about five to five and a half cups of white vinegar. Um, I've seen people use apple cider vinegar as well. I went with white vinegar. There is some mustard seed in here, salt, about 
Recipe called for five tablespoons. I think I have about three and a half to four tablespoons in here. And celery seed, it called for celery salt. That's too much salt, so I didn't add that. And some turmeric, so about a teaspoon of turmeric, teaspoon of mustard seed, three teaspoons of um, dill weed, and one teaspoon of celery seed in here. scraper I'll give you some extra time on on your your YouTube okay you can really go by smell with this you know if you bought store-bought dill relish what it smells and what it tastes like Okay, pickles. We've got our water bath canner going. I've got my jars sitting in here, warming up. We've got our dill relish. I've got my lids sitting in some warm water, not boiling, just sitting in warm water, kind of getting things set up. I tasted the dill pickle mixture and it tastes like dill pickles. <laughs> so, I'm gonna write down the recipe that I used and go with that one. And I like the consistency. I think though, the next time I do this, I might put just a little bit more um, pepper in there. Uh, what I mean, like either a red or green pepper. I put green pepper in this because it's what I had. So I'm gonna get that mixed up. It is warming up. It said not to boil it, but to warm it through consistently. So I've just been kind of stirring it. It's on like a medium to low heat. And that way, as we are packing our jars, it won't shock any of the jars. We are putting hot in hot. Never put hot and cold or cold in hot. Hot in hot, cold in cold or room temperature and room temperature. So that we're going to stick with and then we're gonna water bath these. Um, the recipe says for 15 minutes, I've seen them say 10, I've seen it said 15. I've even seen it as little as five. So I am going to get this set up. I will probably do it for 10. That's what the majority of my pickles have been. Hang on, I'll get you situated here. I'm probably going to do mine for 10 um, and we should be good. I am going to try, like I've been saying, a new method and I will let you know how that set goes out. I will probably have two runs in the canner depending on how much room I have, but I think I can get them all in there at once and just get it done with. Okay, so we have our jars filled. I've got an inch head space on the top. We are gonna get ready to put our lids on. And I've got just a little bit left, so I think I can do maybe two. But if you remember, I have a whole nother bowl in there of diced cucumbers. So I need to decide, are those gonna be dill or are they gonna be sweet? And I'm thinking they're gonna be dill. <laughs> um, I'm actually gonna to remember to debubble my jars this time. It seems to be something I forget frequently. But just run it down the sides. Just getting any excess bubbles out. then you want to go ahead and get you some vinegar in a little bowl. I think I already did that one, but hey, we'll do it again. Um, get you some vinegar in a little bowl, and we're going to clean the top of our jars off. Okay, you don't need much. 
Just a little splash will do ya. We are going to, I have no idea where my paper towels are. So we are going to go ahead and use a clean, clean, use a clean towel. I mean, this didn't have any sugar in it. So, what is that? It didn't have any sugar in it. So, I mean, there's technically nothing sticky, but we don't want any debris. So, any pickle juice, any little fragments of little mustard seeds or dill or anything stuck to the top. We can get all that stuff off. some lids here. Keep trying to think of a way to I might have to do something Got my ninja stick. Okay. I have to do something nice for Joe like um, make him dinner. Because he went and bought me my magnet stick. My magnet stick. My lid lifter. Oh, look at you. You just jumped right out of the jar. This is usually the part everybody gets a little weird, nervous about. Put it on, turn it once, and then turn it just a little bit. When the lid, when the ring stops, it is tight enough. You don't want to crank it down. But when it stops and it catches your jar and your jar starts to twist with it, that it's on. And two fingers, two fingers. I'll be going crazy with tightening down jars. You get them too tight, they will buckle, it won't seal. But um, like Joe got to experience the other day with his pickles, he just had to recan them. Do you all have that one animal, cat or dog, that seems to, hang on, you guys are, I feel like you're crooked, seems to lay right at your feet everywhere you go? She's either at my feet, in front of my feet, or behind me, so I have to be very careful when I step backwards if I'm doing dishes and I step back. She usually lays right behind me. Same thing when I'm brushing my teeth she will come and lay behind me. I've stepped on this dog I don't know how many times and hasn't stopped her. She's still laying behind me. So we're going to go ahead put these in the canner. The canner is not boiling yet but it is on warm. We're going to fill these jars up. Um, get this up to a boil and then we're going to start canning them. Guys, my dill pickle relish is done. I did try uh, the new canning method and um, what I do though is that after they have a uh, water bath for the time allotted, I turn off the heat and I let them sit in there for another five to ten minutes um, just to kind of let everything calm down, cool down, and rest, yeah. So I just let them hang out in there. And um, then I come and I remove the lid. So, what I can tell you, at least doing with these pickles, um, all the jars 
um, sealed. And I guess you could say uh, they, they popped, they pinged, they made their little noise, you know, when you sit them out on the counter and you, you hear the little pop noise. Uh, these were all done before I pulled them out of the canner. So I am not sure if that's because of what I canned, how I canned, or, um, or, or whatnot. I did decrease the time of them being water bathed, and uh, that's just part of this experiment that I'm doing. So um, please keep in mind that <laughs> the liquid that's in here is all vinegar so uh, nothing's going to live in this <laughs> their vinegar the the jar sealed and plus you know if anything starts growing or a seal fails or something we're going to smell it or see it but i wanted to see if this particular type of canning would work so i'm experimenting with this okay so I think um, I'm all done for today. I am a tired mama. I have a stuffy nose and a scratchy throat and I'm gonna go make myself a cup of tea. And um, Will you make me something to eat? Oh yeah, the kids want me to feed them. <laughs> oh, tell me to eat her. Okay, go play. So um, yes, I'm gonna do dinner and finish up and clean up my kitchen and I think I'm going to leave the rest for tomorrow. So thanks so much guys for joining me today, for hanging out with me and being here as I kind of walk through these experiments and trying new things and being adventurous and diving into some things that I don't know and trying to do it without fear. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today and as always, I thank you for joining me on my journey and I bless you on yours. Yeah,